is not a fun time for a lot of people, I think partially because pop culture doesn't really give us guidelines for it. There are lots of movies and shows about the magic of childhood or the self-discovery of high school, but preteens in media don't really have a defined identity. So in real life middle schools, you have kids trying to hang on to their childhood, kids trying to act mature, and kids awkwardly trying to do both at the same time. Not fun. But if for some reason you do want to revisit this horrible time in your life, there is, as there is so often, a musical for that. I'm the Broadway Neophyte, and this is the 25th Annual Putnam County Spelling Bee. In the opening number, we meet our spelling competitors. It's a little bland at first, but things get better when we meet the dysfunctional adults running the bee. To the incident of five years ago that <laughs> I'm in a much better place now. <laughs> We learn more about the kids via fun facts, which is a good way to keep the story moving while distinguishing the characters. Ms. Ostrovsky came in second in her school's Halloween contest. <laughs> I was roadkill. <laughs> William Barfay is an antisocial former finalist who uses his magic foot to spell letters on the ground. Olive's best friend is her dictionary, and she's saving a seat for her parents who didn't bother showing up. Chip is last year's champion, Marcy is the kid who excels in everything but is too nice to resent, and so on. A lot of the comedy comes from unusual sentences and definitions of the words, like boanthropy, the delusion that one has become an ox. The other thing you should know about the show is that a couple of the spellers are actually audience members, with no scripts, being forced to spell increasingly hard words for the other's amusement. The show has a definite theme of awkwardness that doesn't end with the characters. They want the audience to suffer. They will be told they were raised by nuns and eat board game pieces. They will be the pretty girl who distracts Chip Tolentino so he misses a word and sings a whole song about it. And in Pandemonium, they even have to participate in a dance number. If you're going to see the show, you may as well bring along a script and costume because you're a cast member now. Prayer of the Comfort Counselor is entirely sung to the last one of the audience spellers to be eliminated. Once they're out of the way, the kids get some solos. We learn that Logan has a strict dad and a laid-back dad, and is under a lot of pressure to succeed. laments not being as smart as his siblings, forgets the words and improvises, blows bubbles, plays with the puppet, pets his hair, and then somehow gets the word right and passes on to another round, all in the space of under three minutes. Later he does get eliminated, but takes it pretty well because he got into the county finals realizing that he is smart in his own way. But just not mine, since I opine, I think I know. This kid recognizes his strengths, even if he's not the absolute best, and even if they don't include staying on task or not falling off his chair. As someone who struggled with academics, and like most people, is good at some things and not other things, we could all stand to be more likely. About that most people thing, Marcy Park speaks six languages and gets first place at everything, but also sleeps three hours a night, hides in the cabinet, and isn't allowed to cry, which is where the kid's backstories start to go from black comedy to actually kind of sad. Luckily, after consulting Jesus, who doesn't really care about spelling bees, she frees herself from expectations by intentionally getting the word wrong and frolics into a land of autonomy. The mood whiplash really sets in when Olive sings a song imagining her parents being loving and supportive, but her real parents never showed up and apparently don't care much for Olive or each other. Finally, Logan's strict dad tries to sabotage Barfay's magic foot technique by spelling soda on the floor, which doesn't succeed. Logan declares that she can win without her meddling dads, and confidently spells the word. V. U. G. 
G H E Bug Wrong. But at least she leaves with a newfound sense of defiance, independence, and the knowledge that you hate losers, so do I. I'm a loser. But no. Oh, well, you're just gonna. is down to two spellers, Olive and Barfay, who bond over their love of words and realize that since they're more or less equals, either one of them would be okay with second place. But because the magic foot should not be questioned, Barfay wins. The show ends with a reprise of that bland as hell intro song, and more positively, an epilogue about the spellers' later lives. Logan Schwartz and Ruben Year One, 31st Dad, Punta County Spelling on her seventh try and final year of eligibility. She went on to become Secretary of Education under President Chapman. I mean, a one-sentence happy ending is a bit rushed, but at this point you're just glad to know the kid's okay, you know? He gained great respect and notoriety for his pioneering efforts in the combined scientific fields of psychiatry and podiatry. <laughs> oh, Franklin, I would stay away from psychologists if I were you. She grew up to be exactly what she wanted, a loving and attentive parent. This pony bear has cats. And we are done. The soundtrack is decent, but not incredibly memorable. The best is probably Pandemonium, in which the spellers lament people who aren't them getting really easy words and life being unfair in general. There aren't really any other musical theater songs about this, so it stands out. Everybody gets to sing, they spin the bleachers, swing on a rope, get people from the audience to dance with them, and it's a good time. annual not saying this whole thing again is a funny unique show with almost as much audience participation as it has secondhand embarrassment and horrifying middle school flashbacks would recommend i'm the broadway neophyte and i'm always i'm i'm, I'm here to wait let me do that again i hear the bell that to me is not an inviting sound that little ding to me it brings a plaintive air i always thought that life was fair. I mean, I never felt a smidgen of despair. They say a bell can break your heart, but just not mine. Since I opine, I think I know. Juice, please. 